Welcome to A Day of Prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. You're listening to Day of Praise Morning Bible Study and we're so glad you can join us. But before we get into the word, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for your written word and just how you speak to us, Lord, each individually, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you that we can have a personal relationship with you, Lord. Lord, we also just thank you that for your Holy Spirit, Lord, and that he lives inside of us, Lord, and that he's flowing in us daily, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you for everything that happens to us, Lord, because we know that you're in control, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you for the destiny that you have given each and every one of us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. We are excited to have you with us as we continue our discussion on the book of, and study, on the book of Acts. So, welcome. Thank you for joining us. We are blessed to have you with us. And we are blessed, especially for those that, you know, continually partner with us and in, in liking the episodes, subscribing on any number of the platforms you find a day of prayer and on sharing the messages with others so they too can learn and grow in knowledge and relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So thank you for helping us carry on the the mandate and the work of the ministry in helping build the Lord's house and in ensuring the gospel is preached throughout the four corners of the earth. We thank you and we are blessed and we ask that the Lord bless you immensely. Um, and this morning, we're going to do things a little different. We are beginning chapter 7 in the book of Acts and it is a, a significant chapter. Um... So, what we're being led to do is to read it in its entirety, to give an overview, and, you know, we'll discuss this on the whole as an overview, and then in the upcoming episodes, we'll begin to break down in different sections, and by break it down, I mean discuss it and give the revelation and insight that the Holy Spirit has for us to give as we discuss it, all right? Okay. okay. So... We've already kind of divided it into sections, so we'll each have a turn. You'll be able to hear from each of us. And um, so can we get started on that now? Yes. All right. Then the high priest said, Are these things so? And he said, Brethren and fathers, listen. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Haran, and said to him, Get out of your country and from your relatives, and come to the land that I will show you. Then he came out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran. And from there, when his father was dead, he moved him to this land in which you now dwell. And God gave him no inheritance in it, not even, not even enough to set his foot on. But even when Abraham had no child, he promised to give it to him for a possession and to his descendants after him. But God spoke in this way, that his descendants would dwell in a foreign land, that they would bring, to the, bring, bring them into bondage and oppress them for 400 years. In the nation to whom they will be bound, bondage, I will judge, says, said God. And after that, they shall come out and serve me in this place. Then he gave him the covenant of circumcision, and so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarchs, becoming envious, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him, and delivered him out of all his troubles, and gave him favor and wisdom in the presence of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and, made, and he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now a famine and great trouble came over all the land of Egypt and Canaan, and our fathers found no sus sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first, 
And the second time, Joseph was made known to his brothers, and Joseph's family became known to the Pharaoh. Then Joseph sent and called his father Jacob and all his relatives to him, 75 people. So Jacob went down to Egypt, and, and he died, he and our fathers. And they were carried back to Sekim and laid in the tomb that Abraham brought from, for a sum of money from the sons of Hamor, the father of Sekim. But when the time of the promise drew near, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt till another king arose who did not know Joseph. This man dealt treacherously with our people and oppressed our forefathers, making them expose their babies so that they might not live. At this time, Moses was born and was well pleasing to God, and he was brought up in his father's house for three months. But when he was set out, Pharaoh's daughter took him away and brought him up as her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. Now when he was forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended and avenged him who was oppressed, and struck down the Egyptian. For he supposed that his brethren would have understood that God would deliver them by his hand, but they did not understand. And the next day he appeared to two of them as they were fighting, and tried to reconcile them, saying, Men, you are brethren, why do you wrong one another? But he who did his neighbor wrong pushed him away, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you did the Egyptian yesterday? Then at this saying Moses fled and became a dweller in the land of Midian, where he had two sons. And when forty years had passed, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in a bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. When Moses saw it, he marveled at the sight, and as he drew near to observe, the voice of the Lord came and came to him, saying, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses trembled and dared not look. Then the Lord said to him, Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their groaning and have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. This Moses whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge, is the one God sent to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after he had shown wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness forty years. This is that Moses who said to the children of Israel, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear. This is he who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our fathers, the one who received the living oracles to give to us, whom our fathers would not obey, but rejected. And in their hearts they turned back to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make us gods to go before us. As for this Moses who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days, offered sacrifices to idols, and rejoiced in the work, works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. Did you offer me slaughtered animals and sacrifices during 40 years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? You also took up the tabernacle of Molech, and the star of your god, Rempha, Remphan, images which you made to worship. And I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he appointed, instructing Moses to make it according to the pattern that he had seen, which our fathers have received it in turn, also brought with Joshua into the land possessed by the Gentiles, whom God drove out before the face of our fathers until the days of David, who found favor before God and asked to find a dwelling for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands. As the prophet says, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? My, has my hand not made all these things? You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, 
so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold of the coming of the just one, of whom you have now become the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed at him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God, and said, Look, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran at him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Amen. Amen. So there's a lot there. And the Lord led us to, to do that, to read it through in its entirety, because it is one event, right? So it's very difficult, if you will, in the natural to try to, I'll say, section it off to discuss it, because instead of reading it, all all the verses every time, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to do it once, so, so everybody could hear the entirety of the event, and in the future episodes, we will, I'll say, um, break it down into sections mm-hmm. to make it easier to to digest, right? But on the whole, so I have this question for everyone that's here: What just happened? Well, the first martyr, yes, was um, Stefan. So that way he fulfilled that. Mm-hmm. He went home to be with the Lord. Amen. A historical account, I believe you would say, my love. I. That's exactly where I was going with it. He just gave a history lesson. Why is that important or significant? Tell us, darling. Okay. So, in the previous chapter, the end of chapter six, right? Yes. There are lots of lies and accusations concerning not just Stefan, but the church. And Christ, yes, because yes. what they, as we were pointing out in the previous episodes, what the the people were inciting and inspiring others to do, right, stirring up the people, were in there were these accusations, which was saying that, and if I, <clears throat> I believe some verse fourteen of chapter six, if we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place. And change the customs which Moses delivered to us. Right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So, then he's asked in verse 1 of chapter 7, Are these things so? That question. What is that? That's an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yes. It, uh, we, we were discussing in, in a previous episode about... Um, how Stefan gave a defense, right? Yes. Well, what was his defense? The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord was, let's look at the history. So, and why is that important? Because in giving this history lesson, now all the people, Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, and the others that, that are there listening, including these false witnesses, right? Yes. Now have the opportunity to listen to the beliefs and to hear for themselves, discern for themselves, if what is being said and taught in the first church is right and if there is common ground, are there similarities in the beliefs? Or is this completely off base, right? Yes, yes. And notice how much of what in, in these verses, in, in the history that he gives, 
He, I mean, he goes all the way back, right, to, to Abraham, which isn't that something that John the Baptist confronted? Don't say to yourself, yes. we're sons of Abraham, right? Yes. yes. And, and, and others don't say we're children of Moses, right? Yes. yes. So he gives them a history lesson and corrects some things, right? Gives yeah. some, some insight. Because clearly, Abraham and Moses, and even to today, they are they are esteemed, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. In the faith. Mm-hmm. But clearly, when he gives the history lesson, he says, no, 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 you did, we, right, Hebrews, the Jewish people, did not regard Moses rightly. We actually didn't listen to him at all. But now he's this esteemed individual, Right? And yes. Jesus himself even said, hey, wait, uh, you, you think Moses is for you, but I tell you it's him that's going to stand at the judgment in condemnation, right? He's, he's going to stand against you in condemnation at the judgment, right? Yes. Okay, so, so in this, this history lesson, he goes through all of the history and says, hey, look, this is the actual history. And we need to hold it rightly, not deceive ourselves. And everything he said is in line with, wait, all the rest of the Old Testament, right, in the history of the people. So he's giving them the, well, he's giving them wisdom and insight that's clearly revelation from the Lord, right? Yes. He's also giving them, well, that insight so they can hold it rightly and not be deceived or present an opportunity which which they can come out of the deception and renew their minds, right? Yes. Yes. And who is he giving this to? Everybody that was present. Okay, which primarily because they were brought before the council. The, those are Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes. Mm-hmm. So he's giving a history lesson to people that should know the history. Right? right? Yes. So wouldn't they know if what he's saying is true or not? These yes. are people that studied this out, that were extremely educated. Right? Mm. Yes. yes. Layla, you brought up in the previous episode about the irresistibility of wisdom. Right? Yes. yes. They didn't, it doesn't say that they cut him off in his history lesson or defense, right? Yes. Yes. So clearly what he was saying was accurate. And, and by the end, right, they were clearly cut to the quick, it says, by the wisdom and insight and knowledge and understanding that he had given them. Why? Because he received it from the Holy Spirit. And no, they're (laughs) that type of wisdom. There's no argument against it, right? Yes. But then there's the other aspect. It doesn't say much about Stefan's background, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. But it does talk about the (coughs) apostles who dedicated themselves to prayer and the teaching of the word, right? Prayer, study of the word, and teaching of it. Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. They were uneducated men. But here he is speaking to educated men with wisdom that they cannot refute. Right? And and that's a trademark of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Even the most learned people say some of the most foolish things. So being (laughs) being well-versed in human knowledge is of no good. Exactly. Especially when it comes to the things of God. Um, and yes, you may look wise to other carnal people, but it has no standing in the kingdom. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no, uh, PhD section of heaven. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. and education is fine, you know, in its proper place, but it's not an equivalent to the Holy Spirit. And it's not where wisdom, the wisdom of God comes from. It only comes from the Holy Spirit. So mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit gives to us information that we don't have on our own. Exactly. Which is why they often marveled at the apostles, the, the, the disciples, mm-hmm. 
and oh, exactly. and Christ. Like, hey, you're not you haven't been in our crew. How do you know all this? Exactly. And you have a right handle on it, an appropriate mm-hmm. and accurate handle on the information that you're you're talking of because it comes from God, who is all knowing, omnipresent, all powerful. He is the beginning Amen. and the end. So he's not lacking information, but humans are. Absolutely. And then, well, what's the other thing that in this history lesson Stefan does through the Holy Spirit, of course? He gives them this history lesson in love, mm-hmm. but also he makes it personal. He says, yes, this is our history, right? Yes. These are, these are yes. the common things that we have, right? Commonalities, as it were. Yes. Right? In our our view and perspective of the scriptures, right? Yes. yes. The difference is, when, what through, and this is Stephen through the Holy Spirit, it's leading, is saying, it's not a far off thing. This isn't, we're not talking about some past generational peace, right? Yes. We're talking about how it applies to your life today. And these are the areas with which you missed it or misunderstood and are still living in opposition to the Lord. Now, you could say, well, that's harsh. And, and maybe, but it's not that it's not done out of love. When we yes. are made aware of the things, the ways that the Lord is instructing us and that we have been in opposition to him, well, and, and I'll bring up the Lord first because that's where it matters first, right? But then let's also look yes. at with our our neighbor and, and other brothers in the faith, brothers and sisters in the faith, right? Yes. Yes. Are we truly living out and demonstrating the nature, character, and attributes of our Lord and Savior? Are we truly being led by His Holy Spirit? Are we actually applying those things to our lives and to every situation that we find ourselves in? Because we would see that, that difference, right? Yes. yes. And and guess what? When, when the history becomes part of you, right? When you're made aware, when you're given this yes. revelation, this insight, no one can take that from you. But it should also change how we approach things, right? Yes. yes. It matters. It matters for us in our lives and us, you know, our families, our communities, right? Businesses, government, yes. every area and aspect of life. And if we truly want to see it built up, then we have to build it up in the Lord and get his thoughts on on it and apply his ways because they're not our ways but they're much higher right yes 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 so in this this defense if you will since it was called a defense right but this history lesson it goes right back to what we said yesterday in proverbs eighteen seventeen. right the first one to plead his cause seems right until his neighbor comes and examines him and now that it that all these accusers have been examined and they find it irrefutable. Well, they brought it to the next level, right? Which was, as yes. you yes. brought up, honey, to martyr Stefan. And by martyr, we mean murder. Yes, to murder him. Which, because of the Spirit, and not the Holy Spirit, operating in the midst. And I mean the midst of those that would give the enemy a foothold. So there's, in their lives. there's two spirits at play. We have the Holy Spirit working in Stefan mm-hmm. for truth and righteousness, um, love, restoration, and reconciliation. And then we see the spirit of the God of, the, of this world. We see the, the spirit of the Antichrist Amen. working in the, the people who would not hear, which mm-hmm. is also the same spirit that was working in Cain. Well, I was going to I was going to bring back that, but you got it. He, he would not hear what God said to him, but he stopped his ears. And instead, rushed upon his brother to remove the standard of righteousness. Uh, to someone a, to attempt to remove the standard. Yeah, well, that was that was the thought. That's always been mm-hmm. what the adversaries tried to do: remove God, because God is the standard of righteousness. And when it comes to humans against humans, we often look at the human and go, "If I get rid of you, huh, now my problem will be solved." And that's not the case. Um, so you you see the the two different uh, choices. 
in play. Mm-hmm. Stephen did not disengage from Holy Spirit and began operating in his flesh. He wasn't offended. He didn't get mad. He didn't try to murder them back. He wasn't picking up his own stones and throwing it upside their head and whistling for the apostles calling. Right. He didn't ask the Lord to send down angels to fight for him and tear their heads off. He didn't. He didn't. He looked and beheld his master. So, so and let's, forgave. Let's, well, let's bring it back to that too, right? So he he held on to the Lord mm-hmm. and the Holy Spirit so much so mm-hmm. that way, just like Moses, who and a great deal of this history lesson was discussing, his face shone. Right? Mm-hmm. It says that yes. at the very end of chapter six, it says uh, verse fifteen. Right? How when they looked upon him, they saw the face of an angel, mm-hmm. just like Moses, right? Where his face shone. So the glory of the Lord coming through him Amen. for open display so everyone could see it. Mm-hmm. We see also conversion at work because Saul is standing in the crowd. He's on the wrong side of it at this point, but we've talked about that. Mm-hmm. The Lord is sowing seed to win and to convert and to draw unto himself all that belong to him. We see there's the goodness and the mercy of God overall. And we see the people at, who at the time refused to partake of it. So, Amen. Well, let's pause there for today. And um, with that, can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we just thank you for today mm-hmm. and for the opportunities that you give us to turn towards you, Lord. And we thank you for the restoration, Lord, that you bring. And the refreshing, God, we thank you that you make us whole and complete, Lord. We thank you that you are always there for us, Lord, that you never leave us or forsake us, God. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit that you have sent to be a guide to us in this world, Lord, so that we finish our course with joy, God, and we do it in excellence, Lord, and we are well-pleasing to you, Lord. So we just thank you for those things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Jesus' mighty name, amen. And amen. Well, we love you. God bless you, and have a wonderful day. We hope you've enjoyed listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. This year, Pastor John and I are believing for 1,000 new partners to believe God with us and join in the work of the ministry. God is doing great things through A Day of Prayer, and we want you to be a part. If the Lord has placed on your heart to partner with us, please contact us online at adayofprayer.org. Click on the menu and select Partner. Complete the form, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.